we'll we'll go ahead and make this a video on the main channel because I think it's I, I think it's kind of important. I think it's kind of important. Uh, there's not gonna be fan art in this one because it's a it's an impromptu. So I'm just gonna talk about what happened today. So today I decided that I wanted comfort food because Saki and I went on a date night yesterday and it was amazing. However, I feel physically worn out as heck. And one of my favorite comfort foods is masam and curry. Like I, I have chicken tenders, fried rice, uh, masam and curry. Like these are all really good comfort foods that just, they make my brain juices flow in exactly the right way. And I, I enjoy them. So decided to go get curry and Saki was feeling the same way. She was feeling very, very drained from yesterday. Uh, we went to a, a go-karting place and just, we had a good time, but you know, it, it wore us the hell out. So went to get her a burger and she was really craving a garlic burger from O'Charlie's, but O'Charlie's is not really a place you want to go if you are, you know, oh, that is a different pistol. We're going to get that one. O'Charlie's is not a place you want to go and get something to go. It's, it's a place you want to sit down at generally speaking. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead then and head to Steak and Shake. Because Steak and Shake has garlic burgers, too. We'll go ahead and get those. And we'll, we'll see what happens. And then I had this terrible flashback of my time in fast food because of being at that Steak and Shake. So, if you've ever worked fast food, there is a timer that they use in, in almost every fast food restaurant. And the timer, the purpose of it is to make sure that you are taking care of your customers in an adequate amount of time. And anybody who's worked fast food knows that the goal of the timer is not to actually accurately measure anything. I'm also going to lower the volume down a little more when I'm not getting shot at. Everybody knows that the goal of that timer is not to accurately measure anything, right? It's there so that some corporate suit can feel happy that they've accomplished something. But truly and honestly, that nobody uses that timer correctly. So back when I was at McDonald's and when I was at Hardee's, what we would do with the timer is we would tell customers, hey, your food has been, uh, your, your food has not been finished yet. We're going to take care of it. But before we finish your food, can you drive up to this line or go park in this parking space or any of that? And what you would think is that this is a way to make it to where they can get more orders in uh, and, and, oh, hi, Cell. I don't have time to deal with you. Not right now. There we go. You would think that this would be a thing that people would use almost exclusively to make sure that they could get more orders done and that the fast food could be taken care of more efficiently, right? The entire goal is efficiency after all. Well, that's not really what it's used for. It's mainly used to pad out their times. Because it turns out, corporate will punish you in fast food. They will punish you if you're not meeting your time goals. So I went to the Steak and Shake. And if you've ever been in a Steak and Shake line, there isn't a Steak and Shake line. It, most Steak and Shakes just simply do not have any line whatsoever. Because it's just... People don't wait for Steak and Shake. Not really. So, I go to Steak and Shake, and I'm in the, quote, Steak and Shake line. There's just me in the line. There's one guy in front of me, and then there's me. And I get the usual, hey, uh, are your food's going to take a second. Could you drive up to the, the line? And, of course, there's nobody there. There's nobody at the Steak and Shake at all except the guy in front of me and me. So, there's really no reason to put us in this line. And it reminded me of all of the bullshit that I had to go through when I was in fast food where if you weren't doing things to a certain speed, then you would get punished. But if you were doing things to that speed, uh, then you would get punished because you weren't being careful enough. And they wanted you to hit this perfect area between getting the food done quickly and getting the food done right. And you weren't allowed to have an off day. You weren't allowed to have a day where that just wasn't happening. You couldn't be like, yeah, no, I can't do this. I can't do this, you know, pixel perfect thing you're asking me to do every single time. I can't do that. I'm a human being. That's not a valid thing you can tell your boss. Instead, it's just, oh, no, you 
You made your Big Mac too fast. That caused a mess. You're going to get in trouble for that. That's a write-up. Oh, you made it too slow. Our customer had to wait. You're going to get in trouble for that. You're, uh, that's a write-up. The customer didn't have to wait at all, but despite the not having to really wait at all, uh, the timer says that they waited more microseconds than they should have. Also, uh, that XY girl, think about the follow. Uh, the customer waited more microseconds than they should have, according to the arbitrary timer, which doesn't do anything. Don't worry, that's another write-up. <laughs> that was my experience being a line cook in fast food, was just everything you did was wrong, nothing you did was right, and everything you did to try to make things work within the just ludicrous world of fast food, every single thing you did that tried to make it bearable, that was the incorrect thing to do. Don't worry. So does fast food just micromanage hell? Yes, it is. If you've never worked fast food, it is it is being micromanaged. So my, um, my, my time, let's just take my time at McDonald's, right? I wasn't allowed to talk on the line. Now, granted, I would still talk on the line, but if it ever got even a little busy, there was this one manager of mine who would get mad and say, no, you're not allowed to talk on the line. Stop talking on the line. And there were times where I would just mouth off to him and just go, hey, look, science has discovered that human beings are able to move their mouths and their hands at the same time. It's weird. And this, this particular manager, <laughs> strange thing happens. So we always heard these weird stories of him just kind of being... Uh, not a great person. And then, awkwardly, when he moved from being a manager to being a store manager, right? He, he got that that linear progression that everybody hopes to have. He managed to get it. And with his, uh, with his newfound power as a store manager, any time that I went to his store, like if I had to go get any supplies or anything, I noticed that like 95% of his staff were female. He just didn't seem to hire that many men, and he just... I'm not gonna lie, the vibes I get from that are a bit uncomfy, knowing some of the stories that were told behind the scenes at, at the first McDonald's I was at. Nothing that, as far as I know, had ever been proven with him, like, at all, but it, it did make me feel very, very awkward when I had to go into a store and like, so your cashiers are women, your line cooks are women, your order takers are women, and you're the only guy here, and you're the one that decides who gets hired. Mm. This feels strange. And, you know, again, it's not saying that he actually did anything untoward. As far as I know, at least during my time there, nothing was ever proven? Not really? Corbin says, were they all young women too? Yeah. I'd say between 18 and 35 was about the age range of everybody at that McDonald's. Which, to be fair, that is usually the age range at most McDonald's anyway. There's usually mostly your, your 18 to 35s, and then there's like one or two people who have, uh, who have been there either for a while or who are trying to pad out a retirement. Said he doesn't want a tough guy to talk back to him like you did. But see, it wasn't even talking back to him so much as it was... It, you gotta understand, the me that works on my channel and the me that worked in fast food are almost different people. Like, I still was a sassy bitch in fast food, but... Like, if I'm sassy on the internet, what happens is I, I get money for it. it it's It's weird. There are people who are just like, oh, that person's doing a blood sports. I guess this means we need to throw money at them for the entertainment value. And th there's certainly a t t t an argument to be had about how weird that particular interaction is. But when you're working in fast food, if you mouth off one too many times, like that's that's just your job. So I, I didn't have the convenience to do this more than a handful of times as like a little... Like, a little personal, ar not argument against him, but like that little personal bit of sanctity, right? It's that feeling when a customer is an asshole to you and you flip them off behind the counter. And they can't see it, but you know you're doing it as hard as you can. You know that feeling? It's 
It's a failing only for you. You're the only one that gets anything out of it. But don't worry, you're getting plenty out of it, right? I said everyone is out to get you if you work in retail. Retail and fast food. Although I, I will say, when I was in retail, the camaraderie was worse. So when I was in fast food, there was a camaraderie in the store. It felt like everybody had to come together to make this broken, uh, you know, geriatric system work. And when I was in retail, there was this feeling of the system will function in some way with or without me. So I I don't care anymore. And not and that wasn't just me. That felt like how everybody seemed to feel. Said how very American. So my uh Anubian says I pumped gas, my lungs hate me. Yeah, and it's just like when I went to that steak and shake, I just had that flood of memories of going, okay, so they're putting me ahead there's nobody here so they're trying to hit that timer and then all the memories of how bullshit that timer was how it didn't it didn't make anything better in fact actually trying to move people forward so you could populate the queue with more things to serve up it didn't make things more efficient or better it just added anxiety to the line like if you're working the line you know you're going to be working the line almost non-stop during every rush for the most part, you don't need the queue to get so large that you can't fathom finishing the queue. Like, that doesn't that doesn't help you do your job. It never helped any of us do our jobs. It just added one more thing that the serving staff had to take care of, and that one more thing, it, it didn't help anybody. Who is... Oh, it's a... It's one of those things. Isaac says, uh, your car has to hit a pressure plate or something. Oh, yeah, and the fast food lines. Twilord says, for five euros, I feel better about my uh, personhood disintegrating as I clear and serve tables and clean replenish stock while the till and the kitchen are overstaffed. Oy. You know, it just reminded me of all the bullshit I had to do there. And, like, on the one hand... On the one hand, if you're not working fast food, it's not just the mechanics of it that feel awful, right? It's also how people treat you. If you're working fast food... Alright, I'm just gonna put that there. I need that to solve some of my problems for me. But if you're working fast food, people also treat you like shit. There's this one person who I'm working with on a project. And I don't want to say their name or what the project is yet, because I'm not technically allowed to just yet. But they had an experience where they had multiple degrees and yet couldn't find work where they're where they're having to go. Or like even my friend Wayne, who has multiple game design or has a game design degree and still is having to work a job that is more minimum wage. And people just kind of treat you like shit. They don't treat you like you're a person with a, a mass of experiences and knowledge. They treat you like an inconvenience. Like you are the thing between them and their burden. And if you don't operate at a certain efficiency, if you don't operate within a certain code, uh, then you're just not getting them their burger fast enough or right enough. And that feeling feels shitty because like, for me, I've, I've studied sociology, right? I've, I've talked about it on my channel. And if I were to go work fast food again, I guarantee you that it all those amassed experiences, none of them would matter. You would just be another cog in the wheel. And you expect your managers to treat you like you're a cog in the wheel, but it's the fact that it's not just the management that treat you that way. The customers treat you that way, too. That's how I got treated when I was working at Walmart, Hardee's, the multiple times I worked at McDonald's, Quick Trip, Aldi... Like, I am the inconvenient thing between them and leaving. Thank you for the hydrate, Anubian. Says, but didn't you know, Cirrus, wage workers are the scum of the earth, according to Karens? Yeah. Like, they, they feel like the reason that a lot of us got stuck doing minimum wage is because we couldn't find anything else with, uh, 
you know, with the skills that we had. But oftentimes we have skills. But the job market isn't built for us to have those skills. You've got like three kinds of jobs in, in reality. You've got jobs where you're working service industry. You've got jobs where you're working as contractor. And then you've got jobs where you are some form of entertainment. Like nothing, nothing else really exists outside of those things for most people. And it really sucks. Kent Speak says the attitude, uh, even in the staff, is often weirdly uh, hyper-reactive. Always in rush mode when there's no reason to pressure. That's a, that's another thing, right? So the whole, if, you if you've got time to lean, you've got time to clean mentality that just permeates those industries, it is genuinely awful. If I've got downtime, I've earned that downtime by being efficient at my job. But that's not how it's treated when you're working a minimum wage job. If you've learned your job well, and you've gotten that downtime, you've finished all your sandwiches, you've done all your orders, you've done all that. When you are in that position, speaking of people in a position, this guy's in a bad position. But when you've got that position set up for yourself, the reward you get is being told if you've got time to lean, you got time to clean. Thank you for being faster than the other people at your job and doing such a good job. Your reward for your hard work is more hard work. And don't worry, if you come into work tomorrow, we expect you to work at peak efficiency like you did today, over and over and over again. And we expect this in perpetuity. Like, it just, it just kinda sucks. And then consider, like, I haven't worked a serving position, right? I've worked fast food. But if somebody's working serving position, they're not even making minimum wage. They're making two bucks an hour. The only thing that they get to live off of is the tips that you give them. So they have to deal with people treating them shitty all the time, and then they get these tips. And sometimes the tips are really good. I've, I've known people who've worked tip positions and made a ludicrous amount of money do uh, doing it. However, at the same time, you have to think about the shit that people are having to deal with to get those tips. And remember that some of those days, you don't even get those tips. It's a little bit like streaming, but with streaming, I can I can choose when to leave, right? When my mental health gets really bad, I can hit the end button. So yes, streaming is a bit like it in the sense that I can hop on and stream for 12 hours and earn zero dollars. And sometimes I can hop on and you guys shower me with bits and subs and all kinds of shit that I, I honestly have done literally nothing to deserve. But when you're working a tip position at a restaurant, you have all those same mechanics. You can work an eight hour shift and make nothing. And on top of that, you can't leave. You can't leave when nobody's there. You can't be like, well, Nobody's here till the lunch rush. I'm going to clock out till the lunch rush. No, you're you're working that entire time. Good luck. Ran the Fool says, and how many uh, do that are dipshits who know nothing about your work? I, I firmly believe that everybody should have to work fast food and retail for a year each in their life. You should have to work that bottom of the barrel, bottom rung job because that is what will make you respect the people in that industry. But there's this other weird thing that happens that I've noticed with people I won't name. There's this other weird thing that happens where when somebody takes that shit sandwich and they get promoted, and statistically, somebody has to get promoted. We need somebody to lead in these industries. It, it, they don't function without some type of hierarchy there. And I'm, I'm talking about a just, justified hierarchy. So before the uh, before the Anarchities decide to tell me that bedtime is actually intrinsically evil, I'm going to go, and go ahead and cut that one off in the pass. You do need somebody delegating what needs to be done in most of these scenarios. So you're in this position where somebody is statistically going to have to get that raise... And if they don't get that raise, then the job simply will not function very well for anybody. And you take those people, and you're rolling a die. 
some of them start feeling like their shit suddenly doesn't stink. Like, aha, you, you earned a new tier in capitalism. Suddenly you're better than everybody else. Like, no. When I became a manager, that didn't make me better than the people who I worked with. But there are some managers who act that way. Like, they are making 50 cents an hour more than you did. So now they are intrinsically better than you. They start acting no better than the Karens they complained about when they were at the bottom of the rung. And that shit sucks too. So not only do you have to deal with management that's already bad, you have to deal with people who used to be better and are not better now. They are worse because they've been given a fraction of power. Uh, D's really, uh, D's really is my last name. D's nuts. But D's really is my last name says, that was the entirety of the enlisted military structure. How, like, it is, it is understood that even if everybody here is garbage, one of you is going to have to get promoted. But there's always that one person who, when they get the promotion, they're like, no, this promotion makes me better than everybody. This promotion makes me better than you, 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 you. I am suddenly a better person than all of you. I earned being called a better person. And they'll never flat out say that. Corbett says, did they used to be better or were they always hypocrites? There's no real way to know. There's no real way to know. The only real way to tell if somebody's going to be a piece of shit when they gain power is to give them power and see what happens. Idea for an East guy was hit by a truck and I have to survive in American high school. Where is this dude? Buddy, I am, I am in melee. I don't care about any of that gun stuff you're doing. So West Point guys are apparently insufferable in the military. So I, I, I'm from a military family, but I didn't, I didn't end up doing the military. I did have a dream that I enlisted in the Air Force recently, though, and as, like, a, a way to get out of the YouTube thing. It felt weird. But, anyway. Point is, fast food, retail, all that shit sucks. I got heavily reminded of all of my time doing that today. You feel like you're at the bottom of the barrel, and you, you functionally are at the bottom of the social barrel as far as every Karen on the street is concerned. And every day, you must be performing at 112%, or somebody hates you. Either the customer hate you, hates you, your coworker hates you because they think you're not pulling your weight, or your manager hates you. And even when you do really well, those are not the days that are remembered the most. The days that are remembered the most are the days where you performed, poor, performed poorly. How many times have you been at a job where you perform exemplary, and as a result, they take one of your write-offs off? Where they go, oh, you did incredibly well. You, you know that one day that you had a really bad day? We're just going to nix that off your record. Nope. Absolutely not. That shit generally does not happen. And if you work at a job that does something like that, then one of two things is probably happening for you already. Number one, the most likely, is that the likelihood of you losing one of those write-ups is so incredibly low that it might not matter anyway. Two, you're lying. Razor says you were a military brat. Explains a lot. I I was a military brat in a in a specific way. So, my dad and mom split up when I was a, a baby, and my dad was the one in the military. So I was a quote military brat with none of the military brat experiences. So you do poorly on one of these jobs. That's the thing that's remembered. You get a write-up because of it. But if you do well at one of these jobs, they're never going to remove the write-up. Nah, that's just on your record. The only thing that can remove a write-up is time. Or, you know, sometimes not even that. There are some jobs that are just like, nah, three strikes, you're out. Three strikes over one year or three strikes over ten years looks the same. Says you were able to complete your eight-year contract in the Army Reserve. Nice.
I've talked about the uh, the reason that I got my one and only write up at McDonald's, right? Talked about this a long time ago, where I was a manager, and there was a manager on the same pay grade as me who I had pissed off. Because while I was in the middle of my two weeks, she decided that she was going to start putting a bunch of grunt duties on me. And if I tried to delegate them, she got angry about that, even though I was allowed to delegate things. I was a manager too, and again, she wasn't over me. But she was like 20 years older than me, so I guess that gave her seniority, right? And while I was working this position as a manager... I basically, I said something under my breath. I don't even remember what it was. But there was this lady who said that uh, I shouldn't have said what I said. And I'm like, I didn't say anything. I grumbled under my breath, but I didn't say anything specific. And she goes, nope, you did. I know you did. God told me. That God told me to do it. Or God told me that you said something wrong. And I, that didn't make any sense to me. That didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And so when I get told by the manager who, who doesn't like me that she has gone above my head to the store manager to make sure that it's okay for me to get a write-up, like for her to write me up despite not having the authority to, uh, store manager okays it, and she decides to write me up for... Uh, oh, okay. Okay. That... Yeah, that's cool. Dude, just set up a base with him and an NPC. <laughs> and so I... When she decided that she was going to get me in trouble, give me a write-up for what happened, I went to the person who, you know, tattled on me and lied and said, Hey, why... Why did you do that? They just went, no, you you can't say anything to me. I'm, I'm talking to a higher power. Nuh-uh. Yeah, God told me it was the right thing to do. I don't want to hear it. And I'm just sitting there like... You're hearing voices, bitch? Okay. Now, granted, I didn't say bitch because that would have been terribly bad for me to do as a manager. But... Uh, I ended up taking that write-up. And when I had to sign it... There's a part of the write-up where it says, like, hey, do you acknowledge that everything that was said here uh, is true? And the two times I've been written up as, at a job, I've not been able to basically say no. Because, realistically, you can't say no on a write-up. You can't be like, I disagree with the write-up. Because they'll go, okay, cool, you're fired. Like, Georgia's an at-work employment state. They just fire you for it. But because I knew I was on my way out the door anyway... I just put in on the uh, on the write up that the information in the write up is concise but inaccurate. And I think that the manager who was writing me up was too stupid to understand what I put in there, but I signed it and she put it in the drawer. And then the overnight manager called me when I when I was at home and was like, "Hey, so I read your write up." So you're not coming in tomorrow. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, nah, that's that's not happening. I'm not coming in tomorrow. I'm already on my two weeks. And that person has just shortened it to a week. My want to come back to this job has shrunk so hard. Because now I know that not only is there a manager with a vendetta against me that despite having the same amount of seniority as I do, is going to try to do the climb up corporate ladder shit by making it seem like everybody else's shit, but hers stinks. Not only do I have to deal with that, but I also get to deal with every single person's worst nightmare, an employee that cannot be reasoned with because they are apparently talking with God. And I mean, how... How are you going to overpower God in this conversation? You're not better than God, right? That's the joke. I am better than God. So, I don't know. Just, I feel bad for people who still have to work retail and fast food. Because I've done that shit for years. And every moment of it. Every moment of it that was good has been completely overshadowed by the moments of it that were just entirely awful in no way, shape, or form.
So if you are working retail right now, if you are working fast food, I fucking salute you for being able to stomach that shit sandwich. Because that is exactly what it is. It is a shit sandwich. Razor says that would be ground for wrongful termination. You could get that right up looked uh, at by a lawyer. Right, but here's the thing. Nobody in their right mind is actually putting God told me so on the write up. Because God told me so wasn't part of the write up. It was part of the reason that I got the finger pointed at me in the first place for the write up. I think on the, think on the write up it says that I called the manager a stupid fucking bitch or something like that, which I didn't do. But you know what? In hindsight, I should have. In hindsight, I really should have. It also felt really bad because there was another manager at that store, right? Who ended up moving to another store. And we used to be not buddy-buddy, but we used to always have pretty decent conversations during my first tenure at McDonald's because I, I left a franchise and came back to it. I left it as an employee and came back as a manager because I was working at Quick Trip as a manager. So I brought those experiences with me. And they were like, yeah, we'll hire you as a manager the second time. And he's he just turned into an asshole, like a right asshole. And I couldn't figure out why. And I tried talking to him about it at one point going like, hey, buddy, are you okay? Because like years ago, you weren't like this. You weren't always pent up. You weren't always angry. I found out why. It's because the manager that gave me the write-up, that was his mom. And he lived with her. The reason he ended up moving to another store was because our store got the mom. So apparently his, his situation has been for the longest time. The person that, I'm, uh, that I live with is an absolute bitch. And I don't get to escape it. So now I'm taking it out on people at the workplace. Which is, you know, its own kind of shitty. It's its own kind of shitty. But still. Also, I died to an NPC, which feels awful. But. Felt bad for him. Anyway, that's that's me tangenting off at this point. All this, all this flood of memories happened because I was in the middle of a parking lot today. Uh, when I should have just been a, in a drive through Anyway. <laughs> let me know what you guys think about story stuff like this. And I don't know. Hit hit buttons that YouTube likes. Insert end of video tagline. Yeah, it's probably here. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times. And the stability that Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here. And they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Nixie Chan, The Oberon Team, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Curatorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagittarius, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.